Was there an alien on board? Yes. There's definitely something in here with us. We have no weapons of any kind. About books, Ben. I think this one is going under the words adjacent to books banner. Uh, it was about books. It just happens to be. Neither one of us of read the book. A movie that you can't see. Well, don't get back <laughs> into that debate, Ben, or I'll start calling you an ableist. <laughs> no, this is different. This is different. I don't think so. Today. Today we're covering the... Brought to you by our uh, patrons. Brought to you by our patrons. <laughs> the screenplay William Gibson wrote for Alien 3 that they did not use. And I thought it was going to be an actual screenplay, but it is in fact not a screenplay. So it's actually, as it turns out, I don't know, maybe you can get the screenplay, but like... I think the book is an adaptation of the screenplay. Yeah, the book that you told everybody we were going to read is a novelization based on the screenplay. So he, whoever wrote that book took the Gibson screenplay and then wrote it as a book. But he, he did actually write a book. He took like a, you know, maybe a hundred page screenplay. Maybe not even. It couldn't be. Maybe. It'd and then I have to be like 120, 120 or so. Yeah, 120. You need to, yeah. You need, each each page is a is a minute. It's my understanding. So yeah, that you sounds need to get right. Get that two hour runtime. No, no movie should ever be longer than ninety minutes. That includes my beloved Lord of the Rings. I have watched the extended editions, and they're fine, but they're fucking long, and I don't watch them in one sitting. Well, yeah, that's that's why movies can be longer if you watch them at home yeah i don't like that though either because i don't i never come back well that sounds like a problem for you you get get some adderall it's a problem for america and maybe the world but so and if ben is elected president in 2028 he will make sure that there is a that would be top of my agenda there would be a law (laughs) That no feature film made after 2028 could be longer than 90 minutes because we've got shit to do as a country. Yeah. Vote Ben. If you want it to be longer, read books. And then listen to our podcast about those books. The system works. The Pledge of Allegiance will be replaced with words about books. (laughs) So anyway, uh, that's one way you could have you could have gone about this. You could have got the 400 page book. And you could have read that. Or you could go on Audible. Yeah. Long time never sponsor of the show Audible. Yeah, sponsor us, Audible. What the hell are you doing? If, if Audible sponsors us, I promise to stop saying bad things about the Rings of Power. But I like Fallout. I like Fallout. That's an Amazon. There you thing. go. You just balance it. Every time you say yeah. something negative about the Rings of Power, you say something positive about another one of Amazon's many, many properties. It's really just Fallout. It's the only one I've watched, I think. I'm willing to watch other things and say that they're good. The Boys. Th- that one's on Prime Video. That's probably good. People like that. I liked the first season and didn't watch any of the other seasons, but we'll watch them if we're sponsored by Audible. So anyway, if you your go- court, Audible. Yeah, if you go on Audible, I'd give you a code where you could get a discount, but I don't have one because they don't sponsor the show. Um, you know what? Just use <laughs> code words about books. See what happens. <laughs> Maybe if they get enough of those, they'll think like, man, we got to get on this. You won't get any money off and it'll probably just say uh, invalid code, but somebody's logging that. So that's how we, that's how our grassroots campaign takes off. Anyway, you could go on audible and on audible instead of somebody reading the 400 page book, which is what I thought I was getting into. There is a full cast uh, audio drama yeah, I mean, version kind of, of yeah. the script. They definitely didn't get Sigourney Weaver for this. They got somebody that sounded enough like her. To be fair, she was asleep for like 98% yeah. of the script. 
And uh, that is a lot shorter because as far as I can tell, it's just the screenplay read as an audio drama. Now, the one thing I will tell you right off the bat that may work against the audio drama is as I was listening to it (laughs) almost entirely at the gym, I did realize I had to re-listen to parts. Yes, I, I did realize that a lot of the horror of Alien comes from seeing the alien because, like, they don't talk. <laughs> and they you don't, died, uh, like, you just often uh, they don't even make that noise because they're creepy aliens who sneak up on you. Or someone will go, oh, my God, what is that? <laughs> yeah, so so when an alien did come to kill somebody, I often didn't know until they were like, oh, God, no, I'm being eaten by an alien. Or whatever the aliens do to them. Oh, I don't know geez. because I couldn't see it. Ah, uh, it's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> uh so that was a little awkward but we got we got through it we got through it and now we can we can judge this on the merits now i have not seen the movie they actually shot i understand sigourney weaver makes a backwards three point shot <laughs> no i think that's uh resurrection Oh shit! That okay? Then I don't know anything about. Yeah, because <laughs> there's not much to know. It's a fucking downer from start to finish. Did you see Aliens? Yes. Okay, so you know that Newt and Hicks and part of Bishop and Ripley yeah. make it safely. Uh, they they kill the Queen, and they're like, "We get to dream all the way home," and they they go off into the sunset. Um, in Unfortunately, Alien 3, the sun was setting in the direction of space communists. Yeah, yeah. In the actual Alien 3, there are no space communists. What? Um, because it was 1992 and the Cold War was over. So they're like, well, shit, we can't do that anymore. Um, guess... Rocky beat us to it and ended ended the Cold War. That's well, what China's happened. still out there. Yeah, but this was in the 90s where like they I, I don't think they counted. Right. We weren't properly threatened by them yet. Yeah, we weren't. We weren't properly threatened, right? It was a pre nine eleven, post Cold War world. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Anyway, Alien Three, as most of them seem to, uh, starts with people waking up from hypersleep. Except it's just Ripley, and oh, geez, uh, Nude is dead. Hicks what? is dead. Oh my god. <laughs> Bishop uh, lives for a little bit and then dies, I think, halfway through the movie. And oh, yeah, there was a face mad. hugger. And uh, Sigourney, you're, you're pregnant with an alien queen. Uh, it's going to rip through your chest. And oh, kill you. is this the one where she does surgery on herself? No, she kills herself and that kills the alien. She, I think she jumps into like lava or molten steel or something. Probably molten steel. That makes How sense. does she come back to make the three point shot? It's called Alien Resurrection for a reason. They clone oh. her multiple times. Until I was going to say they the resurrect her from the clone. lava. Yes, they they probably got her cells from elsewhere before the lava. But did Saitol have them in a thing in his chest? Yes, <laughs> that is that is how they wrapped up Dune and restarted the Alien franchise. Uh, the no ship accidentally jumps into this universe and Saitol happened to have the genetic material for Ripley and he trades it to them okay. uh, in exchange for Joss Whedon. Why would they want to clone Ripley? They cloned her because something, something, I can't remember, but she had the alien queen inside of her, so maybe her DNA was fucked up, and from her DNA, they were also able to clone an alien queen so they can start a bioweapons division of aliens. Okay. Yeah. But that's Alien Resurrection. Alien 3 is just like, they're on a prison planet, she shaves her head... Everyone from the other movie is dead. Uh, it sucks. It's dreary. They had like 10 scripts or something. And uh, the only good part about it is that the alien was born. I think I heard it was born from like a goat in the special edition. And I remember the edition I saw, it was born from a dog. 
So you got a sleeker alien runs on all fours um, and you're on a prison planet. So you can't get weapons, Ben. And it's, it's killing everyone, Ben. Prisoners are famous for not having weapons. Well, not guns, Ben. Okay. And uh, I remember it doesn't kill her because it senses the alien queen embryo inside of her. And she's like, well, I got to kill this and then I got to die. So wait, she's just pregnant. How did she get pregnant? Uh, uh, there was a face hugger on board the ship, question mark. So one Do, of the things. But they don't make um, you pregnant. They impregnate you. I mean, they put a thing alien. in your chest, but like, yeah, it's not like like it's it's not like an. Like she's actually pregnant or she just I mean, has... it's going to burst out of her chest. Oh, OK. OK. So it's not like the original alien was about the horrors of pregnancy. Mm, OK, I'll buy that. But yeah, there's it sucks. It's a downer and it uh, it kind of erases the feel good ending at the end of Aliens. And yeah, I'll be honest. I, the Alien franchise has always been really meh to me. It has like two good movies. And then like I played with the toys as a kid. And those were much cooler than anything that Hollywood has ever put out after those two movies. I didn't I didn't watch it until we played that one game on the stream we used to do. Yeah. Fireteam Elite. Solid game. And then um, I watched them. I watched the first two because everybody said everything else sucked. I have seen Prometheus for some I'm reason. Sorry. <laughs> it was okay. It sounds like Prometheus was better than whatever that was. Probably. Um, Alien 3 was a famous clusterfuck that went through developmental hell and it had like 10 or 11 scripts. And two of them were actually by William Gibson. He later writes another script that is also not used. So what? what's their, they didn't like it because the Berlin Wall fell? What? Uh, I don't know why they trashed these scripts. Because um, at the time, the Cold War was still been around. And I think he was directed to write it because Sigourney Weaver was thinking, like, maybe she doesn't come back for the third one. And so he was like, directed to write it as though she is not going to come back. And that would explain why she is asleep for 99% of the, of the runtime. And um, really you didn't, you didn't need her back. Her story was, was over, but the studio was like, here's a dump truck full of money. And I think this is the movie where she, like I said, she shaved her head and then, if she had to do any reshoots because of the head shaving, she was going to make like a mint. Like they were going to have to open up a bank of Sigourney Weaver and just print money for her. And I think they ended up having to do that. So she made a shitload <laughs> of money. Well, good for her. I mean, I like Sigourney Weaver. Um, but yeah, I was always kind of confused as to how like she kept winding up with these aliens. Cause like, yeah, this this script, from what I understand, this script that we well listen to is the only one that tries to explain why there are eggs on the uh, the Sulaco. Bishop got, gets torn in half, and then he's like, "Ah, the the queen put some genetic material in my torso as she was tearing me in half." And it's like, okay, I I I guess you kind of wrote yourself into a corner because you killed the queen and then nuked all of the eggs. So it's kind of hard to come up with a good reason to have more aliens show up. But I guess here we are again. The well, toys you... were way cooler. They had a gorilla <laughs> alien. He could grab people like his arms and then you could squeeze his head and he, he shoots water and pretend it's acid breath. It's awesome. Okay. And then uh, they eventually had Predators. So they did Alien versus Predator, which was a good game. And what I hear, a god awful movie. Yeah, I didn't watch it. Yeah, I, I haven't seen any of the Predator movies. 
You should see the first Predator. Solid movie. I missed like all those like later eighties, early nineties like action. I don't know how you did things. this. You also did. You also missed the Terminator, didn't you? Yeah, I did go back and watch that. Okay. I've seen Terminator and Terminator Two. And that's all you need to see. Yeah, that seems to be a running theme with a lot of these. <laughs> yeah, I will say I, I like Predator. I like Predator 2, but most people do not like Predator 2. And I actually like Predators many, many years later. <laughs> I, no, I assume feel... it didn't do well enough at the box office because uh, they never made uh, a Predators 2 and they definitely set up for a sequel. I feel like the name of that franchise maybe hasn't aged well. Yeah. I feel like it would be hard to make a movie called Predators in 2024. (laughs) But maybe that's just me. Yeah, that's just you and your liberal, your sensible, sensitive, liberal agenda, Ben. My agenda is shockingly petty. (laughs) no movies over 90 minutes no one's allowed to do anything with tolkien's work Um, (laughs) those are executive orders on day one those are day one (laughs) okay so how do you want to do this um we we can walk through it pretty quickly yeah and then and then maybe you can explain some of the parts where i was like wait hold on what (laughs) I assume an alien was there <laughs> during those parts. <laughs> yeah, and during those parts, I'm like, but how did an alien get there? What are you talking about? It's so, a visual medium. So we're at the end of the last movie. Everyone's on the Sulaco, and uh, unfortunately, the ship had a navigational error, and we drifted into the Union of Progressive Peoples, definitely not space communists i'm just saying if you belong to the upp you get beat up in elementary school (laughs) yeah and people yell upp and they throw water on your pants and they make you eat dirt yeah yeah i wouldn't name uh, there's a lot of things like i'm I'm, uh, predators upp um somebody should consult me about naming stuff (laughs) edenverse edenverse that's where the money's at (laughs) (laughs) You gotta get that guy on your name and I don't want to write anything. I just want to name it. So the UPP are like, what the fuck is this? I, I don't know. American ship. I, I don't know what the, the guys who aren't us. We're in a cold war in space against guys who aren't us. And they're encroaching on our territory, which presumably does not include earth, I guess. And, um, so that means we get to board board them. And these guys are boarding them. And they're like, huh, what's what's going on here? What's all this then? And then, oh my god, what is that, Jack? Ah, it's on my face and it's hugging me. Ah, quick, ch- shoot him and throw him out the airlock, I think is what happens. And then they, they, they dump him out. And this is where, like, Bishop is narrating this. He's like comatose or something but he's also conscious enough to narrate whatever he's like they, the alien must have the alien queen must have deposited some genetic material in my severed torso that tail also doubled as a penis so when it was ripping me in half it was also spooging and that turned into a face hugger egg which then hatched and got these guys okay we're all up to speed and they grab bishop's torso and book it they're like all right we've seen enough here grab his torso let's go so then and i had to re-listen to this because i was like wait are they at a different space station yes after the upp are like this is our android upper body and sucks about our friend he's dead now the sulaco finally makes it to anchor point which is Space American territory, I guess. And they are like, let's go in there and get them out of hypersleep. And then I think they're attacked by aliens, but I don't know where those aliens came from, Ben. 
There are just aliens hanging out in the hypersleep bay. Because I think this is where they start wildly firing their flamethrower everywhere. And it damages Ripley's pod. And she's still alive, but she goes into a coma. And Newt and Hicks are still alive. That's important. Uh, they're not just unceremoniously murdered off screen. Fuck you. They're alive. But I don't know where those two aliens came from. Were there two aliens? There was a, there is at least one because they're attacked. I think there were two, but there was at least one. And it wasn't that other guy who got face huggered because he was thrown out into space, as you do. Hmm. Was he thrown out into space? I'm pretty sure he was. And I'm almost positive there's two of them. Which makes okay. no sense. I don't yeah. know where that... Well, okay, so walk me through this one, because you know a lot more about Alien than I do. It seems like the they're not... like So So I thought, like, you get face-hugged, right? And then, like, yeah. I guess something gets shoved down your throat or something? Yeah, it, it never... It never made sense to me because I'm pretty sure, like, you would feel that, right? You'd be like, yeah, and when that thing was hugging my face, it was also, like, like, I don't want to say, but, like. Well, maybe they didn't want to say. Maybe maybe everybody died because I feel like I need to go to HR because, like. Maybe maybe everybody died because we need to be more sex positive. I don't know. There you go. But, like, in this one, it seems like it's, like, if the alien missed you yeah so that's not canon that is new for this screenplay adaptation and never comes up again because i kind of thought that was what happened so somebody gets misted right i think later on somebody gets misted by what uh they're in the science lab and, I remember they were in and, the science lab, but what like, mists them? I think oh, they had they start samples. growing an embryo. Yeah, and that mists them, and they're like, "Oh no, you're contaminated. You're gonna have to take off all your clothes." And she's like, "I, I, I think she like thought he was joking, and he was like, no, like for real, like we're in serious danger. Why?" I'm not trying to hit on you. We just got misted with very dangerous biological weapons. Like, okay. So, so they get attacked. They fend off the attack. They damage Ripley's pod. They capture some alien goo. Yeah. And I, I guess maybe Bishop's legs Where are Bishop's legs. <laughs> His legs are just hanging out here. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe the alien queen put goo in both halves. Okay. She, she like stuffed a little there and she stuffed a little there and then she threw him <laughs> in the But then that shit. one should have been a face hugger, not a drone or anything. It, whatever. I, I'm they they had to make up a reason cuz you know, you nuked the only known source of the eggs in the last movie. So we've got to we've got to take some liberties as to why there are still aliens here. Is it in this where they explain that any alien can become a queen? I think they said that. Yes. Okay. If there's no queen to the hive, then one of them has to metamorphosis into well, no, one. I, I remember hearing, I think it was in this, where they say if there are, like if there's one entity nearby, they face hug or whatever. But if there's like a whole bunch of entities nearby, they'll, they'll queen it up. There was it's a like, deleted scene in the first movie where he was tr uh, the alien was cocooning Dallas to turn him into an egg or something, and maybe he would become a queen. Yeah, the way they described it, it's kind of like how like grasshoppers become locusts. Like nobody for sure knows what triggers that, but like when they be something happens and they swarm and they become locusts, like something happens and they turn into alien queens. Yeah. I didn't know that grasshoppers and locusts were the same thing for the longest time. Yeah. Yeah, the friendly grasshopper. You think it's uh you think it's all on yeah, your side? Yeah, I thought he was my friend and I didn't crush agent. him, but there he is like at any moment he might become just a fucking menace. Need to be taken out. There's a fable in there about children. <laughs> At any okay. moment, they could just murder you. Every murderer was a child. 
Oh, yeah. You think about That's that. True. So also in CPP territory, they're UPP. hooking up UPP. You're right. You're not CPP. <laughs> You're UPP. C- C- yeah. C- <laughs> CPP is their ally <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that watches from afar. <laughs> so uh, the UPP, they've got the upper half of Bishop and they're like, all right, plug him in. All right, we're going to go through his memories. I guess that's a thing a synthetic can do, I guess. And they find a lot of the logs of the Aliens movie, and they're like, oh, my God. We need to develop really dangerous, uncontrollable biological weapons. Nerve gas, anthrax, nuclear bombs, not enough. We need to... We need to develop eggs that we can't control that will spread rapidly and murder everything. Let's do it, dog. And then I'm adding, I'm adding that to the 2028 agenda. And uh, you know, we're we're done with this shitty android. Let's just uh let's fix him up and send him back as a gesture of goodwill while we try to create a I did enjoy that where they're like <laughs> where they're like let's fix him up and send him back as a gesture of goodwill. Why? Cuz it'll fuck with them. That's kind of the reason. It's like yeah, because they're so, going to say that we're barbarians or something. The relationship here is the I'm going to say whale and Utani. The, the corporate station is a, a first of its kind. No weapons. Neutral. Oh God, uh, I forgot about the stupid no weapons thing. It's a research. It's a research platform and. People can dock there to refuel and stuff, but like it's really not supposed to be used as any kind of forward military base. And it's it's like the International Space Station. I think that's I mean, except it's not international. It's just the corporate people in the other people's space. But it's some like diplomatic achievement that this even exists. Yeah. And so that's where like a lot of the tension in the plot comes from is like they're trying not to start a war. But the confusion is when this alien thing shows up, it's like very obvious that the alien DNA or virus or whatever it is, is designed. Like somebody made this. And so the communists think the corporates made it and the corporates are actually just trying to turn it into a weapon. Yes, the corporates are definitely trying to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the communists rightly suspect, but the, what they both have not calculated, well, I guess the corporates know, uh, they didn't develop that. But I don't think they, I guess they do suspect that it, it is from like a, it is an old alien weapon from like some yeah, someone, older civilization. Yeah, someone thinks that this might be we're looking at the result of another uh biological arms race and it clearly went well based on the fact that we've never seen them yeah and the only the only remain the only uh one that we have seen was a fossilized skeleton with its chest burst out from within um, and he was on a ship that was transmitting a signal that was telling you to stay away. So obviously we need to get that and we need to, uh, turn a profit on it somehow. It's, it's going to turn out real well. That's, that's some social commentary because that is 100% what would happen. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's not a chance in this world somebody would not try to get that thing and weaponize it. And doesn't that mean that the real monster was man all along? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Burke so is I, definitely the worst person, the worst thing in, uh, aliens. He's so, got so, hundreds of people killed and infected. Speaking of killing bugs. So you're, you're a homeowner, right? Yeah. So I had a wasp nest oh. on my desk desk or on my deck sorry not my desk um yeah that'd be a lot worse (laughs) and i called my landlord i was like hey can you do like can you deal with this because like i don't know i I don't even know how to begin to deal with a wasp nest uh i'm a renter and (laughs) i'm thinking like i've seen people like 
hold a cup of gasoline up to him and the fumes cause him to fall in and stuff like i was like i don't know how you how you deal with this really um so my Did landlord get a him, stick with a hook my landlord himself i thought about that the only problem is i live on the second floor and while i will know i just pushed pissed off a bunch of wasps and then ran inside my house. My upstairs and downstairs <laughs> neighbors may not know <laughs> that I just pissed off a bunch of wasps. Uh, so I decided not to do that. Um, so I called my landlord, right? And he's like, yeah, I'll be right down. And I'm like, well, that's weird. He's this, this is not the kind of place where the landlord like ever shows up. <laughs> he always sends a guy and um, he shows yeah, up himself. This, Cause this is the fun stuff. He shows up himself with a can of spray. And I was like, are you going to spray him? Like, that's bold. Like, they're going to light him on fire. I was like, that's going to they're going to fucking kill you before you. Before you finish spraying him. like, um, no, he shoots this spray, right? It covers the nest. The, the wasps start to buzz. And then whatever he sprayed turns into a foam and expands to like five times the size. Oh, my God. And like totally traps all the wasps and they're just falling down and he's like yeah give that like an hour and and uh you sweep it up and i was like he's like it just dissolves and blows away and i was like what the fuck is that <laughs> <laughs> i'm kind of curious now too we had a it wasp was, nest in our it was mailbox called like black flag something black Black flag, flag wasp something. If you type in wasp black spray? flag wasp, you'll either. Yeah. Okay. Foaming wasp and hornet killer. Yeah. Yeah. It just foamed up and like the whole corner that they were in was just covered in foam. And then, yeah, an hour later it was all gone. And I just knocked down the hollow nest and swept it off my porch. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, we had a big wasp nest in our mailbox and the exterminator came over with just like a long stick and just knocked it over. (laughs) So where I was going with this is in that moment, I did kind of feel like the real monster was man. (laughs) Like you exterminated an entire nest of wasps. with What he did to those wasps, what this mild mannered like... (laughs) landlord in a in a buttoned up in glasses did to those wasps was was just that was embarrassing man i mean like I, I i don't even know he just we have a foam now that can just take out a whole hornet's nest hitting a hornet's nest has been like a, a proverb in all of human history and now it's like he said it with that foam shit yeah the waste all of them yeah. and then and then you know what he didn't even think about it afterwards. That was just like job complete. Going home now. Okay, bye. No, he was literally walking around. He's like, yeah, I've been doing a bunch of these. Whoosh. He literally, yeah. he just walks out onto my deck. Whoosh. And then every wasp is dead. And I was like, I was afraid of these things. He's just like casually they're... committing wasp genocide over yeah. here. That's nuts. I mean, maybe this is a thing everybody knows about. Maybe this is charcoal all over again. <laughs> but, <laughs> this is just one of those things in life that I'm like, God, that's frightening. That's frightening. Cause like, that's gotta be super toxic and it expands so fast. And like, it's gotta be toxic to other things. Right. <laughs> like, that's a weapon, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a weapon designed to murder wasps. I just saw a picture of a wasp touching the foam and immediately falling, and it's dead. That's what happened. Jesus. Yeah. No, it blew my mind. I mean, that's that's the thing. Like, I know you come here for books, and we're not talking about a book, and now we're not even talking about that thing. But, like, I don't know. Get you some of that if you got wasps. Yeah, I think that was uh, someone pointed out that the horror of like the Reapers was that they will treat us like that wasp just and we're all done and won't even think about us ever again. Yeah, that was a a Lovecraftian horror was visited upon those wasps. (laughs) So, yeah, what we're what we're saying is we need to develop something like that for the aliens and uh, mission solved. Yeah, yeah. 
He comes at you with his, movie. his fucking acid blood, and he's going, <sighs> and he just, and he his body foams up, and he falls over and dies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I forget what was happening in this in the audio drama at this point. Um, I remember. I think we were talking about the engineers. <laughs> Newt goes off to live with her grandparents in, I want to say, Oregon. Montana, I thought. No, you might be right. It might be Oregon. Yeah, I think and, you're right. And uh, it's not important because she's dead canonically. Maybe. I, I hear maybe it was retconned so that nobody died because Alien 3 like sucked. And Did no they just one clone liked them it. all? That'd be nice. I'd be down with that. <laughs> so Bishop and Hicks are like, all right, they're definitely like, we, we know the drill, right? This is Wayland yutani They're always up to shady shit. We just had an encounter with Xenomorphs. They probably got some of that shit around here. Let's go get that wasp spray and go destroy all those embryos that we know they have. Like, 100%, they're doing some alien genetic experiments around here. Let's go get them. And this is where the the, the girl is like, ah, do I really have to take off my clothes? And it's like, well, we're not trying to get with you. you you've just been covered in alien goo, but okay. All right. And then I think there's a, another scientist, Spence? I think she helps... Hicks and Bishop destroy the aliens or something. I did like how the Wayland Utani people show up and they're like, we're going to try to turn this into a weapon. And every single person on the station without speaking to each other has come up with a, their own separate plan for how to be like, no, nah, that can't happen. <laughs> it was actually funny. And I think it was intended to be because there's a moment where you think um, you think Bishop is going to actually help them. Because that's that's the that's the psych out with Bishop in the like goddamn you Bishop, but he cares. He actually cares. That's the he just his monotone. Yeah. Um, no, and that's the thing. They're like Bishop, you can't do this. Blah 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 blah. He's like, I was setting it up to self destruct. What were you doing? Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay then. And uh, then a uh, girl who was like, "Do I really have to take off all my clothes?" She starts taking off all of her skin. And she's a monster now. Pow, pow. Blam, blam. I'm pretty sure they kill her. Yeah, I found that out when they pow, powed and blam, blammed. I was at the gym. I specifically remember I was doing a shoulder press. And then all of a sudden, everybody was fighting. And I was like, oh, I guess there was an alien. <laughs> yeah, so. You know what the audio drama needed? It needed like that guy at Shakespeare plays who's like, and then the two kissed and blah, yeah, blah, blah, exposition. And like, yeah. You know, you there are some uh, shows on like Netflix. You can turn on the it's it's for like the visually impaired. Someone will will basically describe the scene to you. They need yeah, that. You get those at movie theaters, too. Yeah. Yeah. Do that for this. Yeah. We're all visually impaired for this. We only have the audio. Or you really did need somebody to be like, oh, my God, she is taking her skin off and becoming the alien. And it looks like one of the the human drone ones. I ah, think it's she got was something mouth else inside though. its mouth. Yeah, because they're they're So what's happening with when you get spritzed with the alien mist, you don't get a chest burster. You mutate into the alien yeah i thought they were a different color or shape or something but maybe i was wrong yeah i don't know i mean i think they're trying to hint at the like the human the human they hybrid tried ones. to make it more scary i guess and they, more like body horror than just yeah the pure they HR made it they made it a lot more gagger. like the thing yeah, they did. Yeah. And I was not a fan of that because we already have the thing. Kind of liked mm -hmm. Alien to just be Alien, but that's just me. Whatever. Anyway, 
Um, did you know there's an Alien 3 script where they were, like, on a monastery planet made out of wood? That sounds awesome. I don't know anything about it, and it could have sucked. And I don't know how a plant could be made out of wood, but I want to see that. <laughs> oh, you mean it wasn't just like all the structures on the planet were made out no, of wood? No, it is a planet made of wood. Are you serious, or are you just... No, that is true. That is a thing. I don't think that's possible. I'm not a physicist. Ward's but I th- utterly bizarre Alien 3 pitch <laughs> took place on a wooden planet named Arceon, which was run by a group of monks who reject futuristic technology. Like, I'm not a physicist. They rejected technology I, like I gotta, planets. Okay, I gotta think there's something about, like, if you get enough wood for it to be a planet... Like maybe it was a hollow planet. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no gravity or anything. Um, Cause like, you know, it's like really hot when you put something under a lot of pressure. Like I don't care. I don't care. That sounds confusing and I wouldn't be scared cause I'd be too confused. <laughs> Cause that feels like one of those like doctor who things they do where they're like, yeah, it's a wooden planet. And you're like, that doesn't make any sense. He's like, eh, there it is. I'm knocking on it. It's wood. It's wood all the way down. But what would be the point? I don't know. I'm the doctor. <laughs> I'm not here to explain shit to you. So, Oh, there's an alien tabletop RPG. Anyway, going back to, um, the thing, we, we've got all these a- people ripping off their skin. There's aliens. We got to abandon ship and also set it to blow. This was a really short, like, and now we're done. Like, it's like two hours and change. It really was like they were doing a movie without the visuals for this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so at some point, the UPP gets blown up by a nuke their satellite with the aliens on it by another UPP vessel. And they're like, oh, they must have been experimenting with it too. And they had to contain it with a nuke. All right. Now we've got to set our station to blow. And they do that, Ben. And then they... I know. And then they run away till I think they go on the outside of the ship. They gotta, they gotta, they gotta destroy the station before the USS Kansas City docks, uh, because they'll get, they'll get got by all these xenomorphs. Yeah, so they're getting in escape pods, and like this is the tension. Like they're they're hoping to run into the Kansas City oh, yeah. uh, and have it turn around. They put Ripley in an escape pod and shot it out. And then the evil head scientist who's an alien now goes and destroys all the other escape pods afterwards. He wasn't the head scientist. He was like the suit. Oh, you're right. You're right. He was the suit that got infected in that room. Yeah. Fox. That was the name I remember. I don't remember any of the other people. Yeah. It it was kind of like... So they do that and they're doing the thing like, will Hicks make it? Will he not make it? And Or not Hicks, Bishop. Will Bishop make it? Um, is Hicks like uh, carrying a, a gun that's too heavy? I don't know. Yeah, he has a that... gun that's too heavy because he doesn't have the loader arms or whatever. Yeah, they're like, you're supposed to be. Make do. They're like, you're supposed to be wearing a suit of power armor to, to wield that. And I'm like, who like, look, he can lift it or he can't lift it. I, I mean, I don't. Hicks is fucking jacked. Uh, He's getting that promotion to sergeant at the end of this with these guns. Maybe. Um, yeah, so then they blow it up and then Bishop's like, okay, they get picked up by a UPP vessel. And they're the, the thing ends with them going, okay. Bishop's like, I think humanity should try to be one species again. You've got yeah. a common enemy yeah. that should bring you together. You can unite the communists and the capitalists in a quest 
to destroy this recently discovered alien life. And it's like, or we could we get rid of these capitalists, comrade, because literally all they do is they try to develop biological weapons that they can't control that will kill everyone. I, uh, I'm not a big fan of them, actually. Uh, yeah, it's like nobody who's in Wayland yutani likes Wayland yutani but they also don't like the communists because communists are annoying. Yeah, it's like maybe we need to get the old bull moose party going again and we need to just trust bust. <laughs> Something stinks in the business world. Do the show! Trustbuster! You've had worse suggestions. Yeah. Alien 4. Trust bust. Yeah, so... Okay, so my reaction to the audio drama was like, first, it's very clearly uh, the scariest thing about Alien is seeing an alien sneak up on somebody. And then nah. do the sound. I like the- I like just imagining it. They didn't I like I like when they're in a room and you're not sure that there's an alien in the room until partway through the scene when they're like, and we got to we got to sneak past it or else it's going to get us. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah. there's an alien in there. OK. <laughs> yeah, you, you <laughs> I didn't don't realize we were supposed to be tense and scared. <laughs> You don't hire uh, H.R. Geiger to, uh, or Giger or whatever his name is to, to do concept art for your audio drama. The, the whole thing about Alien, like it, it became very apparent how much it relies on visuals, which is fine. It's a movie. This is just a weird way to read a weird script that I guess people kind of wish got done. And I got through it and I was like, you know, the, it sounds like, a pretty standard monster movie with room for a sequel. Like it clearly sets up a sequel. Yeah. We got to go to their home planet Hicks, which we're assuming exists. And like that, it wasn't just the space jockey with a ship full of eggs. It took us like 50 years to find that ship again, Bishop. I don't think we're finding a home planet anytime in our lifetime, but if, 20th Century Fox wants to pay us some money. I guess we could go find it. But I mean, it was a thing. It could have been fun. Um, yeah, it just seemed yeah, like a monster I wanted movie. to see that movie. Go to the home planet. Yeah. Yeah, That's this movie would have been kind of like, eh. No, it definitely would have been totally average. Yeah. But it... That's why I was like, so why is everybody so in love with the idea of this one? Like, I I don't often see a lot of rejected scripts turned into novels and movies and or, or audio dramas. So it's like that. That was my confusion. I was like, why? Because the third, the actual third movie sucked so much shit that people were like, I will gladly take anything else as long as it doesn't arbitrarily murder my favorite characters off screen and then kill Ripley at the end. Yeah, so I guess I understand that. Because, again, this would have been totally fine. It would have been fine. It wouldn't have been anyone's favorite alien movie, but I don't think anybody would have been mad about it. It definitely is more about whatever comes next. Yeah, we can spin our wheels, get a third movie out. It's almost like a soft reboot. I would assume Ripley's coming back in the fourth movie, though. Yeah. I think that initially that was the plan, to have it be more a Hicks thing. Explain it to me other than, like, nostalgia. Why do... Why is Ripley the one we need to... She wasn't even a soldier. No, she wasn't. So like, cause she managed to kill a queen and I guess that means, but didn't she nuke it? No, she threw it out of a, out of a airlock. Oh, after wrestling it with a power loader. Well, could we nuke it? Yeah, I, I do feel like it would be kind of a one sided fight if like, oh, there's their home planet. Let's just bomb it from orbit until there's nothing left but core. Oh. Yeah, but then the mist will get all over your ships. And it's in space. We'll get the uh, the Mega Maid from Spaceballs and suck it all up in the vacuum. 
<laughs> yeah, I I never really like I like Ripley as a character. I, I don't mind Ripley at all. It's just I was always kind of confused as to I, like I feel like her story was done af- after the second. Movie. Yeah, it's like why do we need to keep getting Ripley? Like why is she the only one who knows how to do this? And it's it kind of reminds me of like the Halloween franchise with Jamie Lee Curtis. It's like look, I mean, I'm glad she keeps showing up. She's she's a fun lady, but like why is an 80 year old woman the only one who can fight Michael Myers? <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the per, it's the person he would least expect to come after him. Like, remember in the first movie when Michael Myers was in an insane asylum and he had to break out during a transfer because presumably like two big dudes could hold him down? No, I don't remember that. I I've only seen Halloween. I want to say five for some reason. What? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you need to go had watch the niece. <laughs> you need to watch horror movies, and and I'll watch sci-fi movies, and we'll meet in the middle. Yeah, no, he was he was literally just a mental patient in in the first one. But I thought he was magic. No, in the well, he might have been in the first one. He gets up after getting shot, but. Uh, okay, but the fifth one's where he has a niece, right? I have no idea. <laughs> I can't keep them straight. After, okay, Halloween was okay. Halloween 2 kind of sucked. Oh, wow. And every subsequent Halloween has just been like dumber and dumber. Halloween 3 is just a different thing entirely. And I don't know. I haven't actually seen the new one or the new I haven't seen the last couple. I haven't seen the old lady Halloweens. And I think most wow. of them aren't canon anymore. You should. And I didn't see the Rob Zombie ones. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Are there three different Halloween series? No, it's a mess. Um whenever a new movie comes out, the new movie has to tell you which ones count for that movie. Okay. All right. So presumably some of them will say Halloween five and that's where I can just get right in there. I think do they was ever like... do the, the Friday the 13th thing and go into space. No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Okay. So there's still time. No, there's no Jason X of Halloween. I don't think Jamie Lee Curtis could, could survive the G's needed to get into space. And I don't, I saw that movie. I don't remember how Jason got into space. I don't know either, but I saw the ending where they do some kicky flips. And... Did you see the part where he beats a girl to death with another girl? Hey, you want a beer? Or do you want to smoke some pot? Or we can have premarital sex. He puts he puts both girls in sleeping bags and then he picks up one sleeping bag and he beats the other one. <laughs> oh my god, that's so great. They were having fun with that. No, they were not trying at all. It was <laughs> that was definitely just uh, we're totally out of ideas. What are we going to do? Um but yeah, no, I, I thought it was I, for as far as Alien the Alien 3 goes, I it was fine. I don't, I I think there's a little bit of mystique around this because it was William Gibson who wrote the script that got rejected, but there's nothing like Gibson about this. I'm sure a bunch of people will click, click this thinking like, Oh, cause like those William Gibson ones we did are like really popular. Um, and yeah, none of his cyber punky stuff is here. I mean, maybe, Maybe he was going somewhere with that in what would have been the sequel. But there's some stuff with Bishop, but he's not really trying to flesh out the robots or anything. And it just felt like I watch a lot of horror movies and I watch a lot of indie horror movies. And a lot of indie horror movies are made because you have a young filmmaker who wants to make a movie and horror movies often have a pretty good return on investment. They're yeah. We can bu- do it for like 10 bucks. Yeah. They're low budget, high yield. Like they almost always make money. So if you're a young filmmaker, like horror movie is not a bad idea for like a, an early project. And, uh, you just slap together a script 
that's like identical to every other script you've you've ever seen and it'll still probably make money and that looks like what william gibson was kind of doing here no offense to the man i love his writing but it's just a monster movie it's got a set of disposable characters they're kind of (laughs) one-dimensional um some of them you like some of them you don't but it's obviously like hicks bishop and newt are kind of the core of it and newt gets sent off before stuff goes down because he's not going to kill a kid because that is kind of a rule of horror movies like killing a kid is crossing a line into like extreme horror what they call it there's a italian word for it that's just awful jello yeah there you go it means yellow well it sounds awful (laughs) <laughs> Maybe they should get a different word for yellow. There's a reason they called it yellow. It's disparaging. <laughs> wow. It's not, yeah, it's not a good thing. I think it was, I was about like, to say racist. Is that? I don't think it's racist. I oh, think okay. it's, it's something to do with like low quality or something, which they oh, all like, are. Is there a yellow filter over everything? It just looks like shit. The style has roots in cheap paperback novels published by Mondadori with distinctive yellow colors. These were mysteries by authors like Agatha Christie, Ellery Queen, and Edgar Wallace, and soon became known as giallo, the Italian word for yellow. The only thing I like know about Italian culture is, is giallo movies. All so, right. So what do you want to do with this? We're not going to rubric it. No. Um, <laughs> no, we sure not. Uh, I guess the, the question here is really, who is it for and do you recommend it? I do not recommend it. I recommend you watch the first two alien movies and then you just, you know, you're done. Yeah. I don't think this would have saved the franchise. I think it might've bought it some more time, but I think if you want my honest opinion of the alien movies, I know I've missed a bunch of them, but like, it seems like Ridley Scott kind of tried to get like, who douche philosopher with it up in his own ass. Yeah. I I actually think like he would have done better if he just kept making monster movies, you know, like have the deep lore ready and like drop hints and stuff for the people who really are into that. Like I would, I appreciate it, but I think as far as the theater experience goes, people mostly just want to see aliens fighting space marines doesn't yeah that's why the games are where where it all is yeah yeah it doesn't really need to be more complicated than that to william gibson's credit he didn't did they ever drop what uh any more dlc for that game or oh dude i haven't been paying attention you want to revive the words about bookstream uh oh there's an expansion i think what is this well while you're figuring that out i guess i'll say Yeah, I also kind of don't rec unless you're like a hardcore alien fan who needs to know everything about the franchise. I I couldn't recommend anyone really check this out. I don't think this is like a lost Gibson classic or anything like that. It was um, I think I'd probably go if I had it all to do over. I guess there's nothing stopping me, but I'm not going to. I would probably have chosen to read the novel instead of looking at the uh, audio drama. Yeah. I I cannot recommend. You need a narrator for sure. Yeah. I cannot recommend the audible audio drama. The cast is great. The acting's good. I don't really know who to blame on this one, but like it just does not lend itself. Yeah, they actually got Lance Hendrickson and uh, Michael Bean. Yeah, no, I mean it's cool, like it, it, but it's not an audio drama. Like audio dramas have to be written in a certain way to do things with the audio. Like you can't just have a monster movie where the whole thing is like seeing a creepy monster as an audio drama. And it just does not lend itself to being an audio drama. It's very clearly intended to be a movie. So I think I'd go with the novel. I think the novel is probably the right way to get the story, if that's what you're looking for. But I think really only the most hardcore of uh, Alien fans need that. 
I actually think the alien book we read based on the game was a little more entertaining than the, than the audible audio drama or that I read. I didn't, you didn't read that. I, I didn't do what? I read an alien book based on the game. Oh yeah. Played. You read, uh, yeah. you read the prequel to fire team. I'll eat. Yeah. That was, that was better than this. Honestly, My ox. Honestly, that was better than this. Turn it into a screenplay. Just make monster movies. It's not that hard. Print money. Come on. Make them cheap. You don't need to pay Sigourney Weaver. She's too big. You People forget what made them successful. Because it's like nobody knew who the hell Sigourney Weaver was when she was an alien. You just find another actor like that at the beginning of their career. Put them in a horror movie. It'll be great. That's what I say. Well, patrons, you failed again. (laughs) <laughs> and the patrons that failed the hardest are in no particular order jamie the gravy man of the if you want the gravy movie blog really you should have been doing this and i'm kind of disappointed in you for not doing it uh isekai sensei sama of the that time i got reincarnated in the same world as an anime podcast or podcast there's got to be an alien anime out there some sort of manga adaptation. Where is the coverage? Come on, guys. Spooky shy, shy with the Y. It's all in the name. It's not very spooky if you're not TikToking about that alien stuff. And then John Bierce, actual author. Uh, you may well have written some alien stuff into those remaining books of the Mage Art series, and I will be reading to find out. And if there is no alien content in there, you will be hearing from my lawyer. <laughs> Quick, put some put some pages in there about the alien queen deposits some genetic material, and uh, we're good to go. <laughs> oh God.